is a sturdy snare. because I've got to film my snare drum for today's episode. Welcome to another episode of Real Swing, uh, where we talk about jazz drumming and other kinds of drumming. Uh, probably not orchestral drumming, unless one day I buy a kettle drum, you know, or Santa comes and gives one to me for Christmas, or something like that, you know. I mean, Santa could give me a whole bunch of other things, not just a kettle drum. In fact, if Santa came and gave me a kettle drum, I'd kind of be pissed. It's like, why didn't you just give me like a new drum set? Why didn't you give me a kettle drum? What am I supposed to do with that? You know, I'm not, I'm not going to bring that to my gigs, right? I'm not going to cart around a, a gigantic 44 inch kettle drum to, you know, to the jazz club. I'm going to carry it on the train, you know, take it to a gig, right? Take it to a wedding. Yeah, I'll take a kettle, I'll take a kettle drum to a wedding. How about that? You know, then when the, the, the bride enters, and uh, announcing Mr. and Mrs. Cheers. Anyway, for today's episode, we're going to be talking about some brush playing. Uh, because brushes are absolutely essential to playing jazz. Uh, half the people don't know how to play brushes. The other half use brushes to clean the drums. And uh, only a very tiny sliver of human beings actually know how to use this. I'm not one of them, so you don't have to listen to me. Uh, however, I do know that uh, there are a couple of things that you can do to kind of improve the way that you play uh, the brushes on the drums. Uh, one of the first things is uh, patterns. Uh, a lot of people have different patterns that they use for jazz playing. Um, you can start off with a little kind of a, a double circle kind of a thing. As long as you've got some way to imply time, you're okay, right? You can do a, a, a double circle kind of a, in the same direction. Yeah, you can do the outside-y, you know, breaststroke kind of thing. Or you can do, you know... So for me, what I what I do is I start the brushes on opposite ends, right? Because you start seeing like that, starting here. And then you kind of go one and then out, and then two and then out. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. So patterns all don't matter, right? You can use whatever pattern you want, as long as you've got a way to imply time, right? It could be a weird ass like star shape pattern for all I care, and you're counting at five, like one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Just make sure don't do it upside down, right? Because if you if you do the star upside down, you summon El Diablo. So you can use the same kind of patterns for fast, slow playing. Obviously, the faster you go, the smaller the pattern becomes, right? If I'm playing up here, if I try to go quicker, if I try to do the whole length really fast, you know, uh, I'll get big arms, but, you know, I won't be playing it very well. Uh, but yeah, the smaller the pattern gets, the slower you can, can take your time. Sometimes I like to really exaggerate the motions when I'm playing a really nice slow pattern. So I'll, I'll do this like double circle thing. You get the whole body involved, and that way you really feel the time, even though it's oh I'm getting a bit dizzy. Okay, maybe don't exaggerate so much, right? But most importantly, when playing with the brushes, is the sound, right? The sound is really really important, and uh, I learned this from a. Uh, the Jeff Hamilton school of playing brushes a long time ago. In fact, I'm using his brushes. Uh, that's how much I, 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 I listen to the guy. Uh, he's got a little concept that is quite uh, easy to uh, uh, quite easy to understand. It's basically uh, one major thing. He actually says two major things, but I'll use the one major thing. The one major thing is when you're playing a brush, kind of a sound, you always want to have this 
swooshing sound constantly going, right? So if I'm playing anything, switch hands like sometimes it goes to the right sometimes it goes to the left and ultimately you're, you're constantly having that swooshing sound um, the cool thing about this though is that it's a, it's a technique that's really really easy to master um, because even though you don't have that the coordination to always be swooshing on one hand uh, you can always just uh, you know just play and just fill in the gaps right every time you're playing you, you know just fill in the, the gaps in your mouth And then you go back, you stop, and then when you want to do a nice, like, complicated fill, and you let the sushi sound, just add it in. So you just double up, and the overheads will pick it up most of the time. Shit, I need to go with pee. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>